Hi everyone, I'm Felipe. And I'm Lillian. And we are the Postmodern Family. We are Americans living in the UK <laughs> reacting to Great Britain. In this episode, Great Britain encompasses Canada as well as we uh, make a reaction one of five that we make a week, so hit that subscribe button now. Today we're going to react to Jordan Peterson as a guest on the Joe Rogan Experience episode 1070. Okay, first time doing Joe Rogan. This is a recommendation that has come from the Fortunato Goods Company. So, is Joe Rogan American? He is. Okay, so why are we reacting to him? Because this? Jordan Peterson is guest starring, and who he's is part of the British Canadian. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's part of the Commonwealth. So Can that's I... reacting to Great Britain, the Commonwealth. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's do it. So what you're saying is, that's what I like. <laughs> <laughs> There's only twelve things you need to know in life, right? That's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This um this interview that you just did with this woman, uh, this Kathy woman. Newman, was that in the UK? It was Channel Four, UK. Um, I. I just went I, I felt bad but I was also laughing I went to her Twitter page Ugh. to read like and in with each one of her tweets no matter what she says someone writes underneath it so, so what you're saying <laughs> is and then some ridiculous but by the way the your fans were mocking her but politely non-aggressively there I, I didn't read any rude things like there was no it was, there was no insults or there were, well, maybe a few insults, but there's no swears. It was just playful mocking of the interview that she did with you because the interview was ridiculous. It was a ridiculous interview. I mean, I, I listened to it or watched it several times. I was like, this is so strange. It's like her determination to turn it into a conflict. To It's one of the issues that I have with television shows yep. because they have a very limited amount of time and they're trying to make things as salacious as possible. They want yep. to have these sound bites, mm. these clickbait sound bites. And she just went into it incredibly confrontational, not trying to find your actual perspective, but trying to force you to defend a non non realistic perspective. Yes. Well, I was the I was the hypothetical villain of her imagination, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> well, what happened what was interesting too, the way it, it played itself out because I met her in the green room beforehand, you know, she was being made up and then they put a little bit of powder on me and we had a friendly kind of interchange and then we went and sat in front of the cameras and for a couple of minutes, you know, before before the show got rolling and we had a pretty pleasant back and forth and then as soon as the cameras went on, she was a completely different person. Oh. And I thought, oh, I see. <laughs> I see Schizophrenia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, so that kind of alerted I know my this. to, well, the fact that there was something rotten in the state of Denmark, let's say. Yeah, but, you know, this is know. also why YouTube that. is going to kill TV. Because mm. television, by its nature, all of these narrow broadcast technologies, they, re they rely on forcing the story, right? Because yeah. it has to happen now. It has to happen, in, like, often in five minutes. Because they only broadcast five minutes of that in interview. They did put the whole thing up on YouTube. Mm. To their credit. Yeah. Mm, I didn't know it, that. It, mm. it hasn't ceased to amaze me yet. I think that we watch the full they lane? thought that the interview went fine. <laughs> That's the scuttlebutt I've got from sort of behind the scenes. Because I've, you know, I know some people who know what's going on at Channel 4. And they're shell shocked by the response, <laughs> you know, and, the and then bubble. of course there was the counter response. The Guardian the next day published a paper or published an article saying that, you know, the head of Channel Four had to call in police security because of threats. You know, well, first of all, you can call the police in about anything, and they never did detail out exactly what the threats were, you know. But then about twenty newspapers picked that up and went for the. Well, Kathy Newman is now being harassed by an army of online trolls for doing nothing but doing her job, which, well, I, and then there was a backlash against that in the press. And so it's been a, well, I, interesting. What well, someone took that? an audit of the um, the actual in interchanges that yep. between fans and her, and there was way more negative ones coming your way. Yes, that were seriously negative. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Seriously negative, yeah. violent, harassing, just rude. They're way more. Yep. And no one picked up on that at all. It yep. was all the narrative was she's a victim, yep. even though she was highly aggressive on, in this. But I, know, I, she's I a like funny victim. It's not yeah. like she's not successful. Yeah. You know, it's well, like at some point you think you should have to hand in your victim card. I think like when you go to an Ivy League university, it's like right then and there. You, you get to hand, hand in. in. Yeah, because you don't get to be oppressor and oppressed at the same time. That's just too much. 
Well, one of the things that you pointed out was when you were talking about competition for very lucrative jobs, and you were saying, look what you've done. Like, mm. you, you must have had to work here. And she proudly was saying how, how hard she had to work yeah. to get there. I'm like, well, yes, of course. No one's going to hand this to you. No, this definitely is why, not. And this is why you were saying you are opposed to equality of outcome. Equality which, of outcome. We, I can't imagine anything we could possibly strive for in our society that would make it into hell faster than equality of outcome. Like the historical, the historical evidence for the pathology of that route is so strong. It's like you have to be historically ignorant beyond belief or malevolent or resentful beyond comprehension in order to think that that's a good idea. There seems to be something like a law of nature that's described by this statistical model called the Pareto distribution. And it basically suggests that in any creative domain, there's going to be a small number of people will, will do almost all of the output. But it doesn't just apply to human beings. It, imply, it applies to the heights of trees in the Amazon rainforest. It applies to the size of cities, and it applies to the mass of stars, which is, and it's something like, the more you have, the more you get. Mm. It's something like, you can imagine how that would work with a star as it gets bigger mm. and bigger and its gravitational mass increases. It's going to attract more and more matter. And then as a city grows, well, more and more people are excited to move there because of all the opportunities. And so th some cities start to grow tremendously and others, and others don't. But this, this, this uh, phenomena where a small number of people end up controlling a tremendous proportion of the resource is not only limited to money, and it doesn't only occur in capitalist societies. It occurs everywhere. It's like a natural law. So you see the same thing with number of points scored by a, you know, a spectacular sports figure. There's always a tiny proportion of people who are way the way the head way ahead on the curve, or people who make records, or people who sell paintings, or people who compose music, or people who sell music online. It's all the same. It's it's the one percent gets eighty percent, and so, well, first we can't blame that on capitalism, and second we should note that it actually does constitute a problem, which is what the left wingers are always jumping up and down about, right? Like too much inequality starts to destabilize your society, and it isn't obvious how to shovel money from the top end, maybe the one-tenth of one percent who have almost all the money, down to the people who have almost nothing in a way that's effective so that they don't get thrown out of the game completely and so that the whole society doesn't destabilize. We don't exactly know how to do that. It is a problem because inequality does exist and it does tend to magnify across time. And then there's another problem too, which we haven't figured out, is imagine that in order to make everyone rich, you have to tolerate a certain amount of inequality. It seems obvious. We don't know how many units of inequality you need to tolerate per unit of wealth generated. But the answer is definitely not zero. It's definitely not zero. Mm. So, Yeah, so it goes back to this equality of outcome yeah, idea. Yeah. And uh, this, this thing has perplexed me since I've met you and since uh, you were involved in this or original debate over gender pronouns. Uh, and there was an article that was written recently. I, I forget the exact title of it. it was, I think it was something along the lines of why can't people hear what Jordan Peterson oh, yeah. is saying. Yeah. Y you are misrepresented more than anyone I know in a weird way. You are villainized in a weird way where um, I can't believe that these people are honestly looking at your opinions and coming up with these conclusions. Mm. I, I, I can't help but feel like what is happening is – People are consciously deciding to ignore reality and paint you as this archetypal figure of oppressive white male patriarchy, ignorance, fill in the blank with all the, the rest of the descriptives that you'd like to use. But they've decided to paint you in this way like as – as a target. The um, Twitter world is interesting. And uh -huh. I think um, I can understand how he, people get really... So when they were talking about all the backlash that he... On the Kathy in, Newman. On the Kathy Newman versus him. Yeah. And how people were so vile and yep. just the way they attacked him was so different than the way that she was attacked. Yeah. I can see that. I mean, because people have attacked me on Twitter. Mm. And they are just the vilest kind of attacks mm. than, uh, that I've ever seen. And, and I just feel like, do people not realize that mm. when people behave in that kind of way, that, that they are showing their desperation mm. and um, 
proving the point. You know, I, I, this conversation that's happening with Joe Rogan and Jordan mm. Peterson is so well mannered and mm. so clear mm. in their thinking, the way they mm. speak and the way they can understand each other. Mm. It's so. It's very different than TV interaction. Yeah, a hundred percent. Right. So we just reacted to the the right show, the right stuff. And that interaction was like crossfires and like people did not... Not addressing under- points, yeah. not understanding points. And it seemed, yes, especially the understanding part. I feel yeah. like there was no understanding happening yeah. across. Whereas these two seem to understand each other very well. And mm-hmm. Joe Rogan also showing that he understood the interview very well. Like mm-hmm. the way he... Mm-hmm. I feel like we're on the same wavelength now. And this is sanity, thankfully. <laughs> uh, whereas sometimes yeah. it's just not... Yeah, I mean, yeah. the other kinds of interviews that Jordan Peterson have has been in, it's not sanity. No, 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 no. It's it's about catching him out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is more of a just a conversation. Yeah, and understanding him. Yeah. So he's talking about like the extremes. The very very rich people, the smart people, end up making more money than like most of the uh, the rest of the people, and that's just the way it is. And he's talking about mm-hmm. trees. The output of mm-hmm. probably the out- output of oxygen and stuff, mm-hmm. uh, the largest trees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but they probably also take up a lot of more of the energy of whatever in the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, man, that is just common sense. Mm-hmm. But to the modern postmodern thinking, they hate it. Mm. They don't like it. That's inequality. They mm. see that and they go, "That's not right." Mm. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think um, there's one area of life where that has been overcome in 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 the last two three thousand years. So two or three three thousand years ago, or maybe even more, if you look at the genetic distribution of our ancestors, there are more women in our tree. Than there are men. Hmm. And that's because at some point beyond 3,000 or whatever the figure is, people were born in harems. Mm-hmm. The top males collected all the women. Mm-hmm. And it was very common for a man to go his whole life without having sex. Again, the 1% of men had the 80% of women. Mm-hmm. You see? So it was a Pareto distribution right. of um, sexual intercourse. Mm-hmm. But then comes monogamy Mm -hmm. instituted by some religions Mm -hmm. that then civilized that phenomenon. Mm -hmm. And so now in our modern day, you have a radically different picture. You don't have 1% collecting 80% women. Mm -hmm. You have more more equal, equitable distribution. It's Mm -hmm. very rare for a man to go through life as a eunuch, basically, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as a, what do they call them? There's an acronym for it, uh, an, uninten- an unintentional celibate, celibate. inkel. Hmm. Yeah, Un- yeah. Hmm. inkel, involuntary. Incel. Yeah, incel, mm-hmm. involuntary celibate. Mm-hmm. So before, 90% or 99% of men were incels. Mm-hmm. That's just the way life was. Really? Yes, and the, and the genetic distribution proves it out, that the strong man... The biggest, Mm -hmm. the strongest, the most violent, Mm -hmm. the most able to protect what was his, Mm -hmm. um, hoarded and had his harem. So it's more like the lions, the prides. Exactly. So lots of female lionesses around one One king. king. That's right. hmm. So So because you're saying because that's not today, we we are more monogamous today, that it's hard for us to understand Yes. The truth of that? Yes, that lived that lived reality is not as felt now. Hmm. Um, okay. I mean, there's still a lot of people who have, like the Mormons, have several wives. But they're, the, the Mormons are like a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a percentage but, of yeah, the population. But yeah, but not even... But what, it, what we'll say is that <clears throat> feminism mm-hmm. has had the perhaps unintended consequence of returning us back in that direction. Yeah. Where the hottest men or whatever Mm -hmm. are the ones sleeping with all the women. Yeah, women are... Feminism Mm -hmm. promotes women sleeping around Mm -hmm. with 
lots of different men. Yeah. And and uh, it's usually, by the way, not men who are lower on the on the grade. It's the men who have power, who have income, who have. Yeah, because biologically, I think women are not as attracted to men who are not better than them in certain ways. Not just better than them, but better than the majority of men. Oh, okay. You see, women, you can, you know, disagree with me in the comments, but have the desire to pedestal their men. Because without men being, their man being on that pedestal of mm. he's strong, he's powerful, he can mm. protect, she feels less and less safe. Mm. But, yeah, so I think that because women tend to... Mm be attracted to men who are at least taller or the same height. That's right. Then that would be an example of women biologically wanting to be protected and nurtured. That's right. And... That's right. So, so, so all to say to answer your question is that I think because he's not plugged into the church mm -hmm. and its traditions mm -hmm. and its histories, mm -hmm. he can't answer his own question on capitalism. Mm -hmm. The laws that impose monogamy came into the books voluntarily. Men chose to have those mm -hmm. laws, right? Mm -hmm. um, and just like now, the laws are being changed mm -hmm. so that you can marry as many times as you want or you mm -hmm. or um, infidelity isn't illegal anymore, punishable by law. It used mm -hmm. to be. Mm -hmm. So he can suggest that society at large can voluntarily impose a fix to this mm -hmm. inequality. Mm -hmm. Not to the level that monogamy has now transformed sexual relations mm -hmm. per se, but at least to some measure of, of equity, just like he's cited his in previous talks, um, the studies on mice and play mm -hmm. and how the when a big mice mouse plays with a smaller mouse, mm -hmm. Um, the bigger my mouse has to let the smaller mouse win mm -hmm. some of the time, mm -hmm. something like 20 or 30. There's a magic number. Mm -hmm. And if he doesn't reach that magic number, the small mouse will stop playing with the big mouse. Mm -hmm. And the big mouse loses, basically, because he's got no playmate mm -hmm. at all. And and so this is, again, there's a, even though there's a Pareto distribution of things, mm -hmm. there's a sort of built-in sense of equity within nature. Mm. Um and and so I would have said though that there's that verse in the Bible that talks about how those who are are given much 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 more will much be, more given, be to them. given to them yeah and those who have little more much will be taken like even that will be taken yes. from them yeah yeah I find that interesting because that proves his point about those who have more will be given more and mm. we often I remember reading that. Maybe for the first time when I had read it, I don't remember, years ago. Yeah. I'm thinking, oh, that's unfair. You know, why would God be mm. unfair like that? Mm. And um, I don't know. I guess I, I struggle with this whole idea of he's pointing out this thing and all I can see it, or in, and most people can see it as, is inequality. But is it inequality? And if it is, you know, is it good? Is it bad? And if it's not, then how can we address? Well, you throw is? around the term equality, like it's always good in all contexts mm -hmm. and in all forms, mm -hmm. right? So equality of value before God is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Equality of uh, under the law is a good thing. Mm -hmm. But equality um, in terms of there's no difference biologically between male and female, mm -hmm. that's false. That's right. just not true. So there are certain contexts where equality is good and other contexts where mm -hmm. that concept mm -hmm. is bad. I think in modern society, we've grown to approach equality as always a good concept. Mm -hmm. So whenever someone t just lets that word fly out of their mouth, everyone's like, wow, mm -hmm. that's a good thing, equality. Mm -hmm. I just want equality. Well, what, is that? what does that mean? I, I don't want equality of the sexes. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching this episode. It's the first time we've reacted to Joe Rogan. Let us know what you think and if we should do some more Joe Rogan. Thanks for watching. Bye. See ya.